Hey everyone, John Christensen here, Avid Customer Care. In this video, we'll take a look at dynamic media folders. Let's get into it. So what are dynamic media folders? Well, they're essentially automated folders for manipulating media with Avid. You throw media into a dynamic media folder, or DMF, and Avid can automatically perform tasks to the media, like copy it to another folder, transcode it to a specific resolution, or move it to a bin. I'll show you how to make one and use it in a typical workflow. So since making a dynamic media folder takes a little bit of time, let's first look at a simple use of one with a transcode configuration. We'll set it up afterwards. I have my DMF folder open, along with another folder in which I have media. Here they are now. I'm going to simply drag the media into the dynamic media folder and close out of them. With the background queue open, you'll notice transcode jobs have started on the clips I just threw into my DMF, and the button next to the audio meter has started spinning to show me activity. If different clips have different priorities, you can set them within the drop down menu here in the background queue. Once those jobs are done, click that DMF button on the timeline, and where you see the column for acquire, Click the green bin icon with the little arrow. Your bin will populate with the newly transcoded clips as well as the original files linked through AMA. If you only want to see the transcoded clips and don't want to delete the AMA master clips, simply open up your fast menu here, click set bin display, and uncheck AMA master clips to filter them out of sight. And that's it. I have my new clips all transcoded and I'm ready to start editing. I hope you can see the possibilities here. To create a folder from within Avid, navigate to Tools, then Dynamic Media Folders. The window for DMFs will open up. If it doesn't, check to make sure Avid Editor services are running in your taskbar or menu bar. If you click the plus sign, you'll see Avid opens up a file browser. Here it'll let you select a folder you've already made, or you can right click within the folder hierarchy you wish to use and make a new folder. Select the folder you wish to use and click Select Folder. Now your list will populate with the folder you selected. What you'll notice is you have various options beside your folder that specify certain tasks. These are determined by profiles. You also have a check mark you can hit to enable the dynamic folder. Profiles set operations your Avid services will carry out based on the media folder they're attached to. Let's check out what you can set up. So down here you can select a pre-existing profile from the drop-down menu. If you haven't made one before, your only option will be the default profile. I have one here. The default profile simply links to the clips in a new bin in line with the name of the folder. That's cool, but you can do so much more. To add your own custom profile, hit the Profile Editor button here. Go through the menu and make your selection. Here you can choose whether the folder makes a new bin upon media acquisition or merely uses the active bin of your choice. If you do choose to create a new bin, you can use the default bin naming convention, the name of the volume you're bringing media from, or a specific bin name you've created. The Link Options section gives you some choices for how to link audio. You can hit Edit if you want to link in with multi-channel audio, and click the rings so they light up and connect. You can also choose a specific time code or the project's rate for the audio start time option if you're using broadcast waves. Set up the metadata you wish to include for your real name, choose the interpretation of frame count for the DPX column, select where you get your timecode from for the start column, and make sure to choose your default FPS. Mine for digital cinema will be 23.98. Now that you've done all that, don't click save quite yet. Under all these menus you have a bar regarding actions. Click the plus button there. Some additional automation features are now at your disposal. Open up the drop down menu to see you can also copy your media to a specified folder, consolidate it, or transcode it. Click the arrow to the actions left and you'll be able to set up your parameters. In copy to, you can click set to set up a destination. You can also check off Auto Relink when complete and check into Interplay if either of those options are to your liking. If you don't use Interplay, it's probably safe to ignore the second option. Relinking can be useful to keep media online. If you reopen our drop down menu and click Consolidate, you'll be able to automatically consolidate any files in that folder into the managed Avid Media Files directory.
Take note, you can also select if unable to consolidate, then transcode. This is useful to set up if you have various media entering your DMF, and also because processing happens in the background. Making a safety net for yourself here saves time. Set up those settings if you'd like. One more time, let's reopen that menu and check out transcode. As you can see, the robust features of transcoding are available here to be automated. Anything that goes into that dynamic media folder runs through this process. If I'm taking clips and making proxies, this is handy because I can specify my codec to something like DNxHD36MXF, which is great for proxies because it still rasters at 1080p 8-bit, but with a low bitrate for less space and processing taxes. I'll do that and select my target drive. Click Save when you're ready and type in an appropriate name for the profile. Close out of the profile editor and make sure your profile for the folder you want is set to the profile you'd like to use. Side note here, if you want to delete a user profile because you have too many for your liking, go into the profile editor and click the subtract button next to the profile selector drop down menu. That'll wipe out the one you have open. Click that enable checkbox if you haven't already and get out of the tool menu for DMFs. If you want to get back into it quickly, click the little circle button next to your audio meter on the timeline and that box will open right back up. For more videos like this, check out avid.com forward slash how to. Thanks guys, see you next time.